Kirk Bride, or St. Bride's Kirk, stands in splendid isolation on the Nithsdale Hills, overlooking Entican Foot. This is a visual record and a verbal note-taking. sort of place you can feel the hand of history on your shoulder, so f forgive the repetitions and corrections. The church, Kirk Bride, is named for St. Bride, or St. Bridget, who was an Irish saint. There are a number of dedications to her in Ayrshire and elsewhere in Scotland. So this shows that there was a, a church here before, as indicated by the Celtic cross. So Bridget had all sorts of pagan links and connotations as well. Extremely well built wall around the cemetery and church. It's raised a considerable height above the field. A nice story is told of the old church bell that used to hang here in a small belfry on the gable end. It stood here for many years after the church had been closed, whether it vanished. One of the congregation happened to be in Glasgow, and he heard a bell ringing and recognised it as being the bell from here. So he reclaimed it and brought it back to the area. Not unlikely as it sounds, because these very old bells weren't made uniformly, so they all have their own tone. This is a bit unusual for such a remote church. This extension here is the sacristy. Memory serves, that's where the, the minister would uh, prepare himself for the service. A beautifully carved table tomb at the gable end. Very hard to read the writing, but unusual quality. Must be somebody of some class in terms of the aristocracy. And uh, out of interest, it's covered with bird pellets from birds of prey. You can see the bones and the fur of whatever animals they've been eating, most likely voles, mice, and so on. Here's one of the entrances on the south facing side, surprisingly narrow. what appears to be a marble tomb, a clear skull there. This rather fine broken tombstone, it isn't marble, it's a white lichen. Interesting design, with this sort of diamond Kirkbride Farm was once the site of Entekin Mill, a surprising place so high on the hills for a mill. But this rounded stone looks like a very worn out grindstone of some sort. This is the inside of the sacristy building. Here's the gable end where the altar would have been, and opposite is the one of the entrances. It's a rather interesting stone built into the side wall, the entrance of the sacristy. It has uh, Celtic interlace work on it, showing it's far older than the church. 
It seems to be part of an old Celtic cross. As a Reformation church, this would have been very much uh, out of the beliefs of the John Knox post-Reformation. So such a, a cross would have been broken up and used for buildings like this. Often they were simply buried. The walls seem unusually thick. Presumably to withstand the elements out here and well packed to try and keep as much heat in as possible. Another tabletop tombstone. In the mid 18th century, the ghost of Abraham Crichton famously walked the grounds of this cemetery until he was exorcised. It's unclear which of these is his tomb. The old Kirkbride manse is described as being castle-like. It's not clear where it stood. Across the valley, though, is Koshogal. There's a cottage there which has an old marriage stone taken from the castle above that used to stand and has been long demolished and the stones used for other purposes. <laughs>